So, are you still proudly Nigerian? One year of the present administration, and how are you faring? Our next guest will hopefully help us navigate the political, economic, and financial terrains. A motivational speaker, mentor to many, and regular commentator on financial, political, and uh, other issues across the globe, our guest began his working career as an inspector of taxes mm -hmm. with the Kaduna State Board of Internal Revenue. Shuaibu Idris has worked with several banks and financial institutions as Pioneer Chief Executive Officer. Okay. And in 2002, our guest moved from the bank to join Dangote Group um, as Group General Manager in charge of Human Resources, Admin, Corporate Affairs and Environment. Shuaibu Idris is a politician, is a member of the prestigious National Institute of Policy and Strategic Studies, NIPS, in Kuru Joss, as well as a fellow of several bodies and associations. Shuaibu Idris has traveled to and gained experiences in various fields from virtually all continents of the world. Our guest holds a master's degree in banking and finance from the University of Wales, Bangor, United Kingdom, and a BSc in accounting from Bayaro University here at home, Kano. Let's welcome Shwaibu Idris, MNI, MDCEO, Timeline Consult Limited. It's fact-finding time, and we are counting on you today, you know, to give us all the answers to our questions. Yeah. It's good to have you. Mm. Good morning, Helen. Good morning, John. And thank you for having me, and well done for all the good works you have been doing. Thank you. And indeed, Nigerians are anxious to hear from you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I can tell you that. It's so nice uh, to meet you. I, I, do, I do pray that I will be able to meet their expectations. They <laughs> will. Yeah. 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 All right, so let's take off. Yeah. Let's take off with you providing for us an overview of the current economic situation in Nigeria with emphasis on key factors that are driving it. We don't want to assume anything. We'd like to hear from you. I think, Helen, the starting point should be a bit of a trajectory. Yes, it will be a little long, but I'll try to paraphrase it and make it, uh, you know, short. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to independence, we had an entity, or we had entities called the Northern Protectorate and the Lagos, you know, area where the colonial masters, the British colonial powers we are administering. What was the major economic activities of these two component parts of the British protectorate, if you like, was agrarian and a bit of commerce okay. and a bit of fishing. Now I am looking at agrarian meaning tilting the land mm. and then fishing, also part of agriculture, but now, you know, uh, an entity. Now, fast forward, we got our independence, and what was the major economic activities, or what were the major economic activities? Again, agriculture, trade, and commerce. If you look at the way the rail lines were laid by the colonial masters, they were basically rail uh, laid with a view to moving goods from the hinterland to the coast, and then transported to, of course, the industrial economy of uh, Britain, okay. the then Great Britain. Again, you know, we've got independence. Has that changed? Not so much. Mm. Even post-independent Nigeria, mm. industries were a little bit, if you like, basic industries. Uh, we never had, for example, a tissue paper making factory in Nigeria. We had few textile companies because of preponderance of farming of uh, cotton. But we do farm, uh, you know, groundnut. We farm rubber. We farm cocoa. Mm. Till date, we never had a chocolate making factory of distinction in Nigeria. We had a Cadbury. We had a Nestle. But how much of the, you know, processing plant did we have? Now, unfortunately for us, you know, two things happen. Number one, we discovered oil, so we let agriculture 
and concentrated on oil. Number two, governance was taken away from the civilians to military. The first set of the civilian rule had vision, had mission, had purpose. Mm. You can't fault the sage, let a wallow of blessed memory. You can't fault the late sage, Sir Ahmad Bello, or even uh, Dennis Osadebe or Zumba Mbadwe in the East. These are guys that had focus, vision, mission, and they knew where they wanted to take the component part of Nigeria, whether in terms of security mm. or industrialization or education or, or but those movement were truncated mm. and the military came in. What was the basic training of an average military man to maintain territorial integrity of an entity? Train to shoot and kill. You know, the training for administration was there, but not to administer large populace. Okay. To administer a group of set of people in command and control like structure. Yeah. Not, uh, you know, asking you for suggestion or mm -hmm. comment. In fact, the rule is obey the last order. True. So, we then went into a long period of military rule which truncated the national development planning mechanism that was introduced by the, you know, by the uh, you know, okay. independent I, I want to dive in at that point mm. because you've given us you've given the us the, the history we are going we are doing the trajectory if we sit here today and do that trajectory we'll never live here so what do we have on our hands? Where are we today? Today, Nigerians are obviously struggling with rising costs and tariffs and all kinds of increase in interest rates and all of that. And government appears to be at ease, you know. And we are in a democracy, We're no longer <laughs> in the military era. And what, what's happening to campaign promises at this point? Uh, one year old in government now. You, you, see, you see, my brother John, uh, take it easy if you don't <laughs> if, if you don't understand history you will not get your future sure. if you don't understand where you are coming from you, you may not it. even understand right. where you are mm -hmm. and oh, what brought you, you here yeah. and how do you live frog to where you are going oh, yeah. so the, the if you want to build a building you start with foundation That's sure. right. you know so that was why i said Yes, it is long, but I will press it. Is uh, there is uh, one book that I have given you in 10 minutes or 2 minutes, maybe. Right. You know, we are where we are. Because this country's economy is monolithic. We have only one single, uh, you know, commodity, oil, you know, and it's parapalania or auxiliary. Not argue, but can you state uh, a counter argument? Other than oil and gas, what is the major source of economic uh, revenue for the government? Day to day, for the last 50 years, we've been talking about diversifying the economy or not. Now, let's talk about where we are now, yes. because that is the uh, argument for another day. Yes. <laughs> where are we now? You introduced me as a politician, but I'm going to talk purely <laughs> as a professional. Yeah. A no political inclination yeah. intended mm. and let it be clear yeah. number one Bola Ahmed Nubu took over the reins of leadership of this country at an extremely trying times mm. the economy was not working we had a president called President Muhammad Buhari who never had an economic advisor, whose finance minister was a graduate of accounting. Mm. We had a central bank 
that is supposed to be managing, you know, the finance, supposed to be managing the fiscal aspect of the economy, and the central bank was supposed to be managing the monetary aspect of the economy. Mm -hmm. Even the management of the monetary aspect of the economy left much to be desired. Now, policies that were implemented, you know, were not so much policies that were robust and that they could take us to El Dorado. Mm -hmm. So for the eight years of Buhari administration, a number of the policies that were implemented left much to be desired. Now, enter Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, and he came in, I'm courageous. I need to change the landscape. Oh, there are a lot of things that are wrong. I need to remove fuel subsidy. Mm -hmm. I need to remove the subsidy on electricity. I need <clears throat> to increase taxes. I need to do this. I need to do that. Now, obviously, there were campaign promises, but my dear brother John, yeah. Bola Tinumbu did promise that he was going to remove subsidy. It was a campaign promise. So he fulfilled that campaign promise. Well, the consequences of the removal of the subsidy, the consequences of the devaluation of the Naira, were they unintended? I'm not sure if anybody, even a madman on the street, will stop him or her. Uh, they will tell you that removal of subsidy will obviously, uh, the consequential effect will be increase in yeah. price of goods and services. So, are this, uh, you know, uh, the rising cost of living, is it unintended? No, it is not unintended. The major issue that most of us, and indeed all of us have, is Bola Ahmed Nambu implemented the rice policies, but probably at a wrong time. It was too early. early. He needed to stay to get firm grip mm. of his government and the instrument of power. Mm. He needed to have sat down and got economy planning Plan team plan. Yeah, yeah to be able to uh, as well or rather look at what are the potential consequences particularly to the common man sure. and then how do we help the common man because all the argument has always been oh subsidy is to the powerful and the rich because okay i have three or four cars and subsidizing uh, PMS is me that is getting the most benefit. Mm -hmm. What about the commoner that jump into uh, a bus from point A to point B? How does he or she get ameliorated by the rising uh, transport fare? Mm -hmm. yeah. Again, you could see a basket of tomatoes. Everything. Mm -hmm has yeah. gone up from about how much? 6,000 Naira to 18,000 Naira. Tuba, a yam that used to be 800 Naira, now is 3,000 Naira. Every t so how do we manage some of this? Mm. So these are things that Bola Hamet Nambu and his cabinet should have sat down to do prior to, uh, you know, implementing <laughs> this. It's, it's akin to... Uh, putting you before a river and you jump in and say, oh, teach me how to swim. They don't know how deep the, the, you know, the river is. Okay. Mm. All right. So maybe, maybe that's why, perhaps that's why a lot of us, a lot of Nigerians think that while the government is going left, Nigerians are going right. And that the interest of the common man, like you said, is not really at the front burner for government, a lot of government, not the, only the president, not only the present sure. administration. How, what, what is, what's your reaction to this? I, I think, Elena, I, I would like to moderate your position. You know, it is not that the interest of the common man is not before government. If any, it is the interest of the common man that made the government to take, you know, the, the painful decision that they have to take. What do I mean? Had those decisions not been taken, removal of subsidy or reduction in subsidy, removal of subsidy or mm -hmm. discount in electricity, this country would have been bankrupt by now. They would not have the money to pay salaries. And of the three or five million or ten million Nigerian workers, 
working for the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 90% of them are common men. So if they don't get salary, who support? Mm -hmm. It is the common man. So those policies were indeed the you know, uh, in the interest of the common man. However, like I did say, we need to come back to reality. This government needs to make sure that, you know, situations that Nigerians have found themselves they should try as much as they possibly can to find some level of suko, some level of assistance. We are working up to see that the Central Bank of Nigeria has increased interest rates from somewhere around 18% in one year to 26%, 27%. As at last count, close to about 780 businesses, large, medium, and small, have closed shops. No will be closing shop arising from their inability to pay this excruciating interest rate. What does that uh, signal? We are talking of more joblessness because people will be retrenched. And with more joblessness, poverty will increase. With increase in poverty, insecurity will, uh, will increase. Not that in the next one month or so, a new minimum wage, Mm -hmm. will have to be introduced. Sure. Already we are facing a potential, you know, strike action by the labor unions mm -hmm. uh, by next week. So the situation is, is precarious. And those of us that are elites, those of us who have ideas, those of us who have anything to offer, whether you are asked or not, we should lend support to government so because if it is there is if there is going to be a catastrophe mm. it, will hit all of us. it will hit all of us yeah. okay i like that i like the sound of that okay so now you were introduced as a politician i have no apologies for that <laughs> <laughs> because he once he once went to do policies yes. in his state yes and i have no apologies like i said <laughs> however nigerians believe believe that polit our politicians are the major problem that we have. How do you respond to this perception? And what changes do you think are needed within the political system to, to get us in the right uh, I, 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 I think uh, most of the time, Nigerians tend to, to, to think that you know, they are sent. An average Nigerian, when I point this finger, to you, John, or to you, Helene, the rest of the fingers are pointing at me. So everybody who thinks that the politicians are rotten, what is he or she doing? You know, wh uh, which, which sample population mm. did we use to fish out the politicians that are leading us? So it means we are all rotten. Well, I, you are the one who said that. I didn't say so. <laughs> you are, I, I'm just giving you an analogy. Have the opportunity that the politicians have, you know, are determining, and I don't know if you understand me. Hey, you, 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 you just been, you just trying to sentimental. Uh, not even sentimental. I'm looking for a milder way to put it. <laughs> but let me be honest with you. You're just trying to shield yourself from responsibility. That's the let me, let me tell you. A lot of us. Let, just, just let me land, Helene. If I ask you, be honest to yourself. What is the name of the councillor representing the constituency where you have your house? Jesus. You got me. Tell me the name. What is the name? Okay, you come. You may not remember the name of the councillor. Tell me the name of the member of the House of Assembly, State House of Assembly in Lagos that represents your constituency. Sure. And yet you are interested in the political leadership of this country. Tell me the name of the member of the House of Representatives that represent your constituency, John. So it, falls, it comes back. You come back. So what goes around comes around. We know Nigerians, we are so irresponsible, we are so indisciplined, we are so nonchalant, and then, you know, every opportunity, like uh, Philly Jackson's law of corruption, uh, you know, the, the, the only reason why a Nigerian will say he or she uh, is not corrupt is his proximity to the corruption area. You know, how, how close you are is how much you think the corruption is bad or is not bad. So we, we need to get out of get involved. our comfort zone, 
get involved. Not every one of us will be president. There will only be one person at any point in time to be president of Nigeria. Yeah. There's only one person that can be governor. Excuse my the experience we have today in Kano. We have two guys, Lamy the Sanusi and Amin of Aduba, Robin, Emia, of Kano. But there's only one person. So as, as long as we, the elite, are not ready to take ownership of governance, we, the elite, don't appear to have a national consensus that will say this is how to do. You know, we, we, we can't get a better country. Okay. We go out here, people don't even respect a traffic light. They throw can. They take water in the in sachet or in bottle or they take uh, canned drinks and they throw on the street and they want a better Nigeria. Hmm. How is that possible? Okay. All right. <laughs> I wasn't honestly. Uh, no, I have to confess, I wasn't explain, expecting anything as blunt as this. My goodness! But I thank you for the way you have put it. I don't think anyone could have put it better, because it's time thank for you. us to look inwards and examine ourselves. What has been our own role, you know, in setting our politicians right, yeah. in making them accountable for whatever it is uh, we've asked them to do there. <laughs> you got me sweating in the last. That's the, the that's, that's yeah. well, You see, I'm. You said you are not apologetic of me I'm, being a politician. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, now I'm going to I'm going to turn that table around. It's like we have I'm, um, I'm, just a few minutes. Yes, yeah, just go. a few minutes, and that's why I want to quickly put him on the spot. The new national anthem. Is it the old and now new national anthem? Do you know it? Of course I do. Which one do you want me to sing? Arise, yeah. compatriot. No, no, Nigeria we held it. Nigeria we held it uh, yeah. on their mother. Sing land. it, sir. He will know. He will know. Sing it. I'm, I'm, I'm over sixty, John. I Come know. on. He will know. Let, 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 him, it. let him look. Yeah. Let him look at this national anthem now. <laughs> And tell us if you why believe. are you giving him an escape route? You, I, I, you won't catch me at that. I, I will say it. It. I'm not so much a, a good singer, you he know. But, uh, I can tell you, he, uh, he knows uh, it. on their motherland, do tribe and tongue, may deeper in the we stand. Nigeria, so but right now do you think that the change in the national um anthem you know will help with our cultural reorientation with our attitude you know owning nigeria as honestly, one honestly honestly uh and uplifting the know, family in any way uh madam helen you know there are cosmetics and there are semantics issues that uh, needs not even be discussed what we need right now is a group of decent nigerians elite coming up with what I call a national consensus mm. and then putting it before every one of us okay. so that we can key in. Okay. Uh, unless otherwise we have this national consensus, mm. we will not go anywhere. And why am I saying this? I'm not a prophet of doom anywhere. Mm. However, ladies and gentlemen, you have a Nigerian he or she is a public servant, civil servant working in a ministry. He sit down and yamutu 100 billion naira to himself. <laughs> Cut away this. Yeah. So they ask the person, we want to buy drugs. And he or she inflate the contract. Not by 10%, not 20%. Mm. 300. 500. Helen, I got a discussion with somebody who told me that they sink a borehole and at an average price of 200,000. But how much are we, how much do we give contractors to sink one borehole? Uh, one million naira. Sorry, sorry, That's sorry. five times. Sorry. This is madness. How, how can we do this to us? I how can we do this to ourselves? Question too. How? And the question, Wickedness. the question that the director is asking us now is when are we ending <laughs> so, we have to have a part two of this conversation we have to do it so I, but, 
to any camera. We have to. We have to. Because, have to. In town, because I, I, to I also wanted to know the role of the IMF and the World Bank in all of this story. But for she today, said, wrap now. We okay for today. <laughs> we just like to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we're working at a situation where we can have you come as often as possible because a lot of Nigerians need to know how they can even get involved. You know, get encouraged. And people like you, you know, are the right people that we need at this point in time. Thank you for well, your thank you. I, stand. I want to personally mm. say a big thank you to you. Thank you, John. Thank because you, Helen. In fact, you got me sweating in this freezing room. <laughs> and those questions I didn't have answers to them. Now I'm going, I'm going to start working <laughs> okay. after this show. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you for having me, and I promise you, anytime, any day, anywhere, okay. as long as I'm available, I will always okay. give. It's an opportunity to share knowledge. Thank you very we much. We don't have any other country other than Nigeria. So We're giving you know. another opportunity yes. to get knowledge. Thank you. From John's um, <laughs> um, nuggets. Yes. We normally wrap up the show with my nuggets. And really, I didn't want you to, to take the time of my nuggets. So my <laughs> nugget today is, is, and you'll find it interesting too, sir. <laughs> Learning never stops until you have soil in your ears. Mm. Learning never stops until you have soil in your ears. That's until you drop. Yeah. Okay. We always have to keep learning. It's a Kenyan proverb and it resonates so much with my call for uh, self-improvement, especially in leadership skills. And of course, you know where I'm going. That's executive speech skills, which I teach. As I sat back watching the movie, the first grader, I'll recommend that movie to you. I couldn't help but relate this to our need as public speakers to keep at our dream of achieving our goals of speaking clearly. So I thought I should share that concisely and with you professionally. Today. So you never stop learning until, until you drop it. Okay. That's my nugget. Thank, thank you, John. Yeah. And thank you. And thank you again. Thank, <laughs> thank you, you again. For having me. Thank you for giving us a wonderful opportunity to come to your um, homes and wherever you're watching and impact your life today. It's been today with John and Helen live this last um, first Saturday in a new month. <laughs> oh my goodness. We'll be back same time next Saturday with more. See you again. Bye, Bye now. Bye. Yeah.